Our group assessed West Vigo, a small city within Jefferson Parish with the borders including the West Bank Expressway, Victory Drive, 4th Street, and Louisiana Street. Twelve students filed into three cars to begin the windshield assessment to collect primary data about West Vigo. The first car started exploring West Vigo by traveling up and down the busy West Bank Expressway, which consisted mostly of businesses including the shrimp lock market, schools, a handful of car washes, and automotive repair shops. When this car entered the West Wego shrimp lot, they saw a handful of people buying fresh caught fish, shrimp, and oysters. One shopper stated that he lived in Metairie but liked coming all the way out here to view the fresh seafood caught and brought in that day. A second car turned on to Victory Drive and snaked their way through the inner streets of the small city. This group focused on the housing situation and roads. They interviewed residents to gather information of what they liked and disliked about the West Wego community. This group also noticed that the roads were well taken care of because of there were no potholes and recently paved intersections in some areas. This car ended their journey at the park, which included a baseball field and walking path. The third and final car spent most of their time traveling along 4th Street and Louisiana Street. They saw more businesses, shopping centers, and houses along 4th Street and ended at the West Wego Farmers and Fisheries Market. After two days of conducting the windshield assessment, the three groups found similar things. Most residents' homes were small, one-story houses with small yards. Most apartment buildings were located closer to the West Bank Expressway, and the individuals and families that live in the area seem to be from a lower socioeconomic status or just like to live the simple life. There is a total of six schools in our area, including public and private, that range from elementary and middle schools. Everyone in the different groups agreed that West Wego was clean with little to no trash among the parks, streets, and residential areas. In the end, the group concluded that a majority of the residents enjoyed living in the area and only had positive things to say. West Wego was founded in 1870 by Texas and the Pacific Railroad due to its placing its Western Railroad yard and docks on the Mississippi River, right above the canal that linked the Mississippi River to Bayou Signet. West Wego was compensated from the state for the building of a railroad to the west. There is a folklore in regards to how West Wego obtained its name, that as travelers departed the railroad station, they heard a conductor yell, West Wego, and it stuck as the city's name after that. The West Wego name was first publicized by a railroad engineer, G.W.R. Bailey, when he wrote that the construction of the railroad located west of New Orleans had been completed at West Vigo, which was opposite the western boundary of New Orleans. For a couple of decades, West Vigo was just considered a railroad city, with low population census until the 1890s, after a major hurricane. A devastating hurricane known as the Great October Storm in 1893 destroyed a small village on Chinari Caminata, a barrier island west of Grand Isle, and that took the lives of many residents. This event caused many survivor refugees of the storm to move their families to West Wego. The refugees consider West Wego to be a safer location to move their family due to its location being more inland than their previous home. Then with the growth and use of motorized boats, it also caused an increase in more residents and development of marine-related business in West Wego. The hurricane and growth in business both caused a rapid incline in West Wego population. A large portion of the early residents in West Wego consisted of fishermen, shrimpers, oystermen, and trappers, due to the city being a major seafood importer that went to the markets of the nearby city of New Orleans. The majority of the early descendants were of the African-American, German, and Italian settlers who resided in the city of West Wego. The Chinari Caminata refugees were the largest of the population in the city after 1893. These refugees were mainly of the French descent. It is said that French can still be heard today among some of the residents throughout West Wego. Early West Wego residents took pride in family and placed it at the center of their lives. Residents had a great appreciation for family and community, and they put an emphasis on time spent with family activities and having recreational events altogether. For people more interested in learning about the West Wego history, they can visit West Wego Historical Museum located at 275 Sala Avenue. The current population density of West Wego is 2,746 people per square mile, according to the most recent statistics provided by the United States Census Bureau. 
The total population of West Wego is 8,564 people, of which 53% are female and 47% are male. The primary language spoken is English, which accounts for 94.8% of the population, followed by 2.9% Spanish, 2.1% French, and other languages making up the remaining 0.1%. The community of West Wego is 74% Caucasian, 20% African American, 6% Latino, and 3% other races. The ancestral background of the majority of the residents is mainly French, followed by German, Italian, and Irish. The median age of the residents is 42.3 years old, with 78% of the population being 18 years or older, and 17.6% being 62 years or older. Of the total population, women of the ages of 50 to 54 make up the largest percentage of households. Concerning the environment in West Wego, I would like to give you an overview, talk about the drinking water quality, flooding, air quality, garbage, and mosquito control. As we drove through West Wego on the West Bank Expressway, I noticed that there weren't any potholes in the streets or trash in the median. However, I did notice that the city lacks bicycle and walking paths. Providing residents with these paths would decrease greenhouse gas emissions from vehicles. The city's source of drinking water is surface water from the Mississippi River. In 2016, tap water exceeded all drinking water health standards implemented by the federal government. The city is unable to provide its residents with drinking water because their current infrastructure is old and needs updating. The city is experiencing a 35% water loss, so they purchase water from Jefferson Parish. Flooding is a concern for residents. The city is built near the Mississippi River levee. The flood map depicts the majority of West Wego as a high risk area. The city does a great job at keeping drains free from debris. The air quality index from August 2017 was good. A good AQI means that air quality was between 0 and 50 and air pollution posed little to no risk for the residents. The Jefferson Parish landfill is located in Wagaman and the parish collects garbage twice per week for residents. The city does a great job at keeping the environment clean. I did not see any trash on the ground during our windshield assessment. Jefferson Parish provides residents with routine inspection and surveillance for mosquito larvae and adult mosquitoes and uses chemicals to control overpopulation. The best things in life are free. But you can get West Wego is a vibrant area with a growing population and economy. Income levels and employment opportunities have increased in recent years. The economy is supported mostly by local businesses such as farmers markets and auto repair shops, along with surrounding factories and offshore industry. The housing market is also increasing in price. These changes help the local residents increase their net worth. Although the majority of the West Wego workforce has an income below the national average, the increase in new businesses is helping citizens increase their economic stability. The housing market shows a wide variety of locations for sale. On average, they range from 60000 to 400000 Many houses look like they are in need of updates and repair, but generally they seem move-in ready. For those renting, the average rental is $800 a month. The West Wego Housing Authority is a public housing service to provide safe and affordable homes for families of low income. They also provide job training and employment opportunities. New businesses and the relating job market in West Wego is expanding. The majority of West Wego's businesses line the West Bank Expressway, such as the Farmer's Market and the Shrimp Market. These markets bring commerce from New Orleans and other surrounding communities to West Wego. Jobs listed in West Wego include minimum wage employment, technical jobs, and employment as skilled workers. Many citizens travel for work, driving an average of 22.5 minutes each day. The food service and hospitality business accounts for about $10,000 of local commerce. The retail sales accounts for about $62,000. The mean household income is estimated to be about $33,000 a year. About 24% of West Wego residents live under the poverty line. 
This is 10% higher than the national poverty rate. The majority of residents in the West Waco community own cars as this is important to have private transportation due to medical services, stores, and other amenities being too far to walk or ride a bike in replacement of private transportation. The Louisiana Public Transit Association is a public transit industry within the state. Their mission statement is to promote and educate the people of Louisiana about issues affecting the importance of the public transit industry within the state. Additionally, Louisiana Public Transit Association will advise, counsel, and conduct educational programs on transit-related matters. This public transit provides transportation for residents that are unable to drive due to disabilities or other personal reasons. No other information was provided specifically on this transit system provided in the West Wego community. There are multiple residents seen walking or riding their own personal bikes to get to different places that were in close proximity to homes or recreational buildings. School buses are also provided for private and public school students to use to get to and from school. According to the City of West Wego, the Senior Centers provides free transportation for West Wego seniors to and from doctor's appointments. In order to schedule pickup and drop off times for appointments, residents can contact Allison Romero. Cops are available during school hours to ensure students are safe while exiting their vehicles or school buses in the mornings upon arriving to school and while students are in the classes. In addition, there are speed limit signs near the school that label school zones to be sure that drivers passing by the school are not driving too fast. Furthermore, camera cars and speed limit signs are located near parks and in various areas of the community to enforce safety of the children and residents that are playing at or around the park or around their own residential homes. The response time in the community of West Beagle for police officers is 3 to 5 minutes. There are some sidewalks located on the residential streets throughout the community. However, there is not a sidewalk provided on the main highway in West Wego. This could present as a potential danger for the residents who walk or ride their bicycles as their primary means of transportation. Come together right now over me. My name's Ryan and I'll be talking about policies and government. According to the new Louisiana City Maps released by JMC, the city of West Wego's political boundaries lie in the 8th District of New Orleans led by Senator John Alario Jr. The city is under the leadership of newly elected Mayor Joe Peoples, who defeated the incumbent Mayor John Schedinger in a runoff on April 29th earlier this year. A personal interview with Mayor Peoples revealed key details about the current state of the city's government. According to Mayor Peoples, he won the election based off of two big promises. One, fixing the sewage and water, and two, fixing the government's infrastructure. There are approximately 8,500 residents in the city of West Wego, and only 6,800, or roughly 80% of the population, are registered voters. The main political parties in the community are the Republicans and the Democrats, with the Democrats being the predominant political party of about 5,900 of the 6,800 registered voters. Currently, West Wego has a 35% water loss, which is well above the national standard of 20% or less. Not only is the community's water tower not functioning, but their water plant is closed, so the city pays to use water from Jefferson Parish. However, due to the current water loss, the city is losing even more money. Mayor Peoples claims that he wants to prioritize fixing the sewage during his tenure, but at the current moment, the city government has given him $1.4 million to spend on continuing to fix the parks and recreation around the area. Mayor Peoples is also pushing for better transparency between the government and the public when it comes to community issues. Corruption was a huge problem with the previous administration, and he's seeking to change that problem during his term as mayor. The West Wego community has numerous recreational programs and activities for residents of all ages. Recreational areas include local and state parks, theaters, a senior center, local bars, recreational gyms, and a marketplace. Of these, the most visited are West Wego Park, the Farmers and Fisheries Market, and the Ernest J. Tasson Senior Center. Recreational programs can be found on the community's website as well as their own separate websites and Facebook pages. Weekly events are held at the local West Wego's Farmer and Fisheries Market located at 484 Sala Avenue. These events can be found on the website calendar and include Friday night concerts, poker runs, and movie nights. The West Wego Ernest J. Tasson Senior Center is the only senior center in the community located at 701 4th Street. A moderately sized parking lot surrounds the building with handicap accessibility at all entrances. 
Recreational activities held at the Senior Center include bingo, computer classes, beanbag baseball, line dance classes, and excursions. Some of the excursions mentioned by members include weekly trips to play bingo in Bridge City and monthly trips to Boomtown Casino. Other outings include going to the movies, the grocery store, museums, and restaurants. The main park in West Wego is West Wego Park, which is a multi-use park bordered by Avenue C, 7th Street, Avenue D, and the West Bank Expressway. Toward the West Bank Expressway side is a large baseball field with two baseball diamonds on opposite sides of the field. Each baseball diamond has its own dugout with a recreational office located on Avenue C in between the two fields. Going toward 7th Street, there is a small playground with four swings and a jungle gym. Adjacent to the playground are two tennis courts. A one-mile paved track runs in between the playground and tennis courts and continues to border around the remainder of the park. These recreational programs provide the citizens of West Wego plenty of activities. As a public health nurse, one addition that can be made to enhance their recreation is creating health promotion events located at different recreation sites. Recreation increases community involvement and promotes social bonding between neighbors, giving West Wego a strong sense of community. Communication and the ability to send and receive information between people is an important part of any society. West Wego has several methods of communication for its residents, one of which is newspapers. Newspapers of the area include the Times-Picayune and the West Bank Advocate. Both newspapers are delivered to the doors of residents. For the mayor's office, Cards and letters are sent from the mayor's office to notify residents of obituaries in the community and police leave notes on doors saying that they came by the neighborhood. The City of West Wego website is also an important area of communication. It has a contact us section which you can use to get in contact with City Hall, the DMV, and the West Wego Police Department. Upcoming events are also communicated to residents with posts on the calendar of the website. Advertisement is also a utilized form of communication in West Wego. The major advertisers in the community are local and regional businesses. Tire and auto shops, markets like Rouse's and Winn-Dixie are all advertised in various billboards. Other forms of communication within the community include television and radio. Although West Wego does not have its own private stations, it uses those that encompass Jefferson Parish and the greater New Orleans area. Open areas of face-to-face -face communication include the West Wego Shrimp Lot and Joe's Cafe. While the shrimp lot is primarily used for the buying and selling of fresh local seafood, vendors freely communicate with each other and customers. The communication system of West Wego is not perfect, however. There is no formal communication process that brings information on safety and safety tips to specific neighborhoods for West Wego. They are all shared with Jefferson Parish and Greater New Orleans. Now, This is an issue because communication and promotion of communication between communities is important in terms of safety. Information for emergency preparedness is still primarily communicated through the parish and not the community itself. So for West Wego, more collaboration is necessary between leaders and the population. Education is an important part of every community. Here in the West Wego community are five schools, four public and one private. Included in these schools are Myrtle C. Thibodeau Elementary, Joshua Butler Elementary, Vic A. Petrie Elementary, Stella Worley Junior High School, and Our Lady of Prompt Sucker School. During our windshield assessment, we had the opportunity to visit with some of these schools in the community. Our first school we assessed was Stella Worley Junior High School. Driving up to the school, there was a giant fence surrounding the school. Before we entered the school, we had to buzz the front office to be let in and then enter through a metal detector. Stella Worley Junior High is made up of about 500 students from grades 6 through 8. The predominant race in the school is African American at a ratio of 70 to 30. There is currently a 15 to 1 student to teacher ratio, which is low for the school and causing the school to cut back on teachers. The school does have special education classes at a student to teacher ratio of 5 to 1. There is a nurse on campus twice a week, but there is also a free health clinic that is off campus. The school provides transportation to and from the clinic. The next school we visited on our windshield assessment was Joshua Butler Elementary. This was another public school like Stella Worley. From our windshield assessment, the school looked like an old historic building located in the middle of a residential area. The school holds grades pre-kindergarten to fifth grade and has about 450 students. 
The student-teacher ratio is about 20 to 1, and the predominant race at the school is African American. The school offers three special education classes to provide needs for the handicapped. They also offer a bilingual class for the limited English proficient population. On site is the free health clinic for any Jefferson Parish student as long as they have consent from a parent or legal guardian. The third school we visited on our windshield assessment was Our Lady of Prompt Sucker School. This is a private school. Like Joshua Butler, Our Lady of Prompt Sucker is set in a residential area in an old historic building. The school holds grades pre-kindergarten through seventh grade. Within the last year, the school has increased from about 300 students to now having 400 students. Tuition for attending the school as a Catholic is $4,200 and for non-Catholics, it increases $700. The predominant race is African American and the student to teacher ratio is 18 to one. Part of the school's mission is educating students spiritually, so every Friday the students attend Mass at their church located right across the street from the school. The school does have special accommodations for handicapped children. There is no school nurse on campus. Through our windshield assessment, we were able to see how these schools located in West Wego are great learning environments for children. The City of West Wego offers a variety of health and social services to better serve the community. These include the Postal Service, the Fire Department, the Police Department, an EMS, and a library, but there seems to be a lack of health care services. The West Wego Police Department serves the community through crime prevention, law enforcement, and public safety. The crime index in West Wego is 17%. This means that West Wego is safer than 17% of cities in the United States. The predominant type of crime is crime against property, including motor vehicle theft, arson, larceny, and burglary. The West Wego Fire Department is a volunteer fire company that has been in West Wego for the past 93 years. The fire station offers services such as a fire safety inspection and smoke detector installation to the residents of West Wego. The firemen told us that the city is very safe and it has a very low crime rate. Most of the firemen responses were for lifting people who fell in their houses. The city offers a public library, the Edith S. Lawson Library. This library offers a collection of books, magazines, videos, public computers with access to Wi-Fi, and a public meeting room that holds up to 40 people. They also provide a variety of classes each month. Among West Wego's healthcare systems, the city has a Women, Infant, and Children program. It is a supplemental nutrition program for low to moderate income pregnant women, postpartum women, and breastfeeding women, as well as infant and infants and children under five years old who are at risk for malnutrition. The WIC provides nutritious food, nutritious education and counseling, breastfeeding promotion, breastfeeding support, and referrals to other health and social services. Another health service provided is Primary Care Plus. The service is a primary care medical facility. West Wego has a school-based health center at Joshua Butler Elementary. The school has a full clinic with two nurse practitioners, a registered nurse, a social worker, and a psychiatrist. The main things that they see here are asthma, obesity, and allergies. Some schools, including Stella Worley, provide free transportation to this clinic. An issue that West Wego faces is their lack of health care facilities and doctor's offices. There are no hospitals in the area. The nearest hospitals to West Wego are West Jefferson Medical Center in Marrero and Oshner Health System in Gretna. The provider-to-patient ra ratio in Jefferson Parish is 1 to 88, the dentist-to-patient ratio is 1 to 82, and the provider-to-mental health-patient ratio is 1 to 173. The highest health disparities in the community are congestive heart failure, pneumonia, and acute myocardial infarction. According to the residents at a, West Wego senior, at a West Wego Senior Center, they would prefer to go to an Oshner facility than West Jeff. Alternative therapies in West Wego are also very limited. They have one massage therapist, the Advanced Massage Training Center, while there are no chiropractors, no acupuncturists, and no other alternative therapies. first went to West Wego, we didn't really know what to expect because not a lot of us had ever been there. Um, we had been to that fish market, which is really cool, but other than that, we didn't know much about the community. But as we drove through and saw the different buildings, we realized that it was a really nice place to, for people to live, and everybody in the community loved the neighborhood that they lived in. There were some really nice schools, and we even got to talk to the mayor, who was really cool, Mr. Peoples. So I'd say our perception of West Wego was very positive by the end of the assessment. When we first went to West Wego, 
first drove in to West Wego, we came in on West End Boulevard and saw all of the different shops and restaurants and we saw some tire places and uh, some a lot of car shops. So that was our very first perception of West Wego, but then as we drove in and actually saw the neighborhood, we saw that there's a lot of houses and really nice places for people to live and parks and so I think the that the whole windshield assessment was a really good way to gauge what the community was like by just looking out of our window. A feast. What? The world moves on another day, another drama, drama, but not for me, not for me. Well, I think that everybody brought very different personalities to the group, which was a good thing because we all had different views on the way to come at this project. Um, I think that we needed to clarify roles so once we figured out what everybody was going to be responsible for, we were all able to focus on that and work together as a group to finish this project. High risk for health disparities related to lack of availability to sufficient local water supply. Interventions would include facilitating local legislative lobbying to increase funding for the West Wego Sewage and Water Board, educating the community about the Sewage and Water Board issues and hold town meetings with local, formal, and informal representatives, and advocating to public officials for water fountain installation in easily accessible locations such as parks, the farmer's market, public restrooms, and high trafficked areas. The Healthy People 2020 goal that correlates with this nursing diagnosis would be to attain high quality, longer lives, free of preventable diseases, disability, injury, and premature death. Healthcare access deficit related to minimal primary care providers as evidenced by a low provider to high patient ratio. Interventions include facilitating grant funding applications that could establish a telemedicine program to connect providers to patients, coordinating a meeting between community and Oshner representatives to set up a satellite clinic in West Wego, and partnering with the senior citizens at the West Wego Senior Center to gauge interest in various alternative therapies and for providers to give short presentations on the benefits of these therapies. Some examples of these alternative therapies would be acupuncture, chiropractic services, and massage therapy. The Healthy People 2020 goal that correlates best with this nursing diagnosis is to improve access to comprehensive quality health care services. Maintain safety related to a low crime rate as evidenced by a 17% crime index rating and emergency response time of 3 to 5 minutes. Interventions include assisting in the organization of a lead coalition group representing all neighborhoods by using the train the trainer approach for safety education. Facilitating more community meetings once a month to promote communication between communities related to safety and establishing a formal communication process to disseminate information on safety and safety tips for all neighborhoods. The Healthy People 2020 goal that correlates to this nursing diagnosis is to prevent unintentional injuries and violence and reduce their consequences. Just take it. <laughs> <laughs>
please. Don't cry. You know you can come up here and get it anytime. I'm gonna miss like. that purple bag. So many memories. <laughs> Goodbye forever, purple bag. Someone